amazing. I was recording just now and had recorded, oh, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes into it. And suddenly I heard this voice talking and it was my voice. And I went, well, what's that? What's going on? And sure enough, somehow the posting that I had placed the video on had started playing and coming over. And <laughs> I got distracted because I kept hearing myself talking, but I said, oh, well, I'll just have to get rid of it and re-record. So in sharing a lot of times, what I try to do is I put people into remembrance of the things they already know. I mean, I don't have anything new to teach you. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything has already been said. Everything has already been done. We have Bible scholars. We have Bible teachers. We have Google. I mean, you can go on the Internet. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you've been on the Internet. You can Google it. You can Bing it. You can ping it. You can do whatever you need to do with whatever search engine that you have in order to find just about anything you want to know from any point of view. Really, in these latter days, there's absolutely no reason for a person not to know the truth or to be able to at least examine the truth and to find for themselves what God is teaching them. So, a lot of times what I do when I write to a person or to a post, I don't write to people, but more often than not I'm writing to the point of view that a person's posted about. Like they'll say something and I'll say, well, Jesus said this, and I'll let it hang. Because if they feel convicted, they'll probably come back and... <laughs> Come after me, so to speak. But, and they usually do, quite dramatically. <laughs> With all guns blazing, justifying whatever it is that they feel like they're just about. Which amazes me, because why would you have to defend yourself if you're right? You know, that's what amazes me. But anyways, I just try to put people in remembrance of the things that they already know are true. And I think most often than not, when people react dramatically to what I might say, they're embarrassed by the fact that they got caught you know they 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 did do something but they just don't know how to admit it you know and frankly i always tell people hey look if i did something wrong believe me i'll take credit for it <laughs> Man, god i did it you know it was me <laughs> believe me but learn from that mistake you know and i'll share what it is but learn to choose to accept sometimes maybe a critique that might not be a criticism against you, but it might be about something you're doing, some action that you've taken or some direction that you said something that could be an error. Specifically, this was about like posting on the internet, Facebook statements like, you know, you know, make sure you repost this prayer chain, you know, and put it on everybody's wall and leave it up for 10 to 15 minutes so that I know that you're praying. And they even say that I know that you're praying so that I can see it. And it's like, why do you need to see it? And they always say that part, as though they need to see it, and it always drives me crazy. So there's that part that's in it, for whatever the request is. Then they post what the specifics are, like what the prayer request is, like everything about it, including the name, usually, and the person, and, you know, God forbid that, you know, if it was somebody that was leaving, you know, on a vacation that they posted it because somebody break in their house. I mean, they don't seem to use common sense on the internet lately. And so they post all these details, you know, that nobody wants to know, you know, unless you're a gossip. And they tell all this story about it and why they have to, why we have to repost it and why they have to know we've reposted it and why it has to be a prayer chain and why everyone has to do it. And then I just post something under it, usually starting off with no. Because <laughs> Jesus said, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. So they say, do this. And my response is, I pray about it. Well, God tells me no, and I start off with no, with a period, no. And then I say, Jesus said, I said, no, I won't repost this. Others may, but I will not. And then I'll say why I won't, which usually is that Jesus said that, you know, when you pray, don't be as the scribes and the Pharisees are, you know, who love to stand on street corners or love to be the first in the synagogue, you know, standing up and praying and giving these long-winded prayers as though, you know, God heard them or God will hear them for all their way of saying things. And bluntly, you know, telling people on Facebook to repost and have prayer chains isn't going to get you any higher up or closer to God or heard 
more often or loudly than it's if you just went into your closet, prayer closet, as Jesus said, in hidden or in secret, and prayed. Me personally, my prayer is like, hey, if I read something somebody says, I say, Lord, you know, you know. And then I said, I'm done with it. I'm, I've got an attitude of prayer, man. It's like, hey, God, you take care of it. I'm done. <laughs> I don't need to go into some long-winded detail. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He says that he takes our prayers and interprets them in groanings and moanings, which, you know, could not be uttered. You know, and then Jesus takes that and, you know, conveys it to the Father. So some of this long-winded verbiage that people are putting out there on the Internet, you know, is really um, wrong. And if we really read the scriptures like Jesus said, it's actually sinful. So, you know, prayer chains may be nice in some ways for people to maybe have an idea about what they should do, but it's not scriptural. And it's not biblical. And it's not what God said to do. But when you pray, just talk to God. At the moment that you see it, say it. And let it go. And then don't do it again. <laughs> if you need to repeat yourself, well, okay. But I think it's more for your benefit, really, than God's. But... You can, you know, and me, I just trust the Lord's going to take care of it. Earth furies. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Then you may ask, why have you, my children, to have tribulation if I have overcome the world? My overcoming was never, you know, for myself, but for you, for my children. Each temptation and each difficulty I overcame as it contended itself. The powers of evil were strained to their utmost to devise means to break me. They failed. But how they failed was known only to me and to my father who could read my undaunted spirit. The world, even my own followers, would see a lost cause, reviled, spat upon, scourged. They would deem me conquered. How could they know my spirit was free, unbroken, and unharmed? And so, as I had come to show man God, I must show him God unconquered, unharmed, untouched by evil and its power. Man could not see my spirit untouched, risen above these earth furies and hates into the secret place of the Father. But man could see my risen body and learn by that that even the last attempt of man had been powerless to touch me. Take heart from that, for you must share my tribulations, and in my conquering power you walk unharmed today. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall rise with, no, shall. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the covering of his wings. Oh, well, I can't remember that scripture, but the point is, is that the circumstances of the outward things are not what's important. What the reality is, is that the definition of what God tells us to do in each and every one of our daily existing predicaments that we find ourselves in is where the battle is won or lost. So when you have tribulation, don't worry about what you think may happen. Be more concerned about what God wants you to do in that so that you can be resting assured inside that God abides with you always through all the tribulations and that he's conquered those so that you won't fail because he didn't fail and he is greater in us than we who are in the world. Because the scripture does say that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and nothing on the outward can affect the fact that we're born again of the spirit and the spiritual man is what will leave this all behind and fly, flee, fling ourselves, so to speak, upon our Father's lap, upon the very hem of the garment of Jesus, onto holding on to and hugging Jesus himself, as we will rise to meet our Lord. And in the air. should it be blessed that God would take us in a rapture, then we would meet him in the air. But if you die, in physical means of some death that occurs before then, then to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So you would flee, fling, and be thrown and cast from this physical body directly to be in the presence of God. What a joy. So, in the world, yes, tribulations, struggles, issues, sometimes postings that are kind of 
off the wall. But when you stick with Jesus and do as he leads you, then the Spirit of God will breathe upon you words of comfort, blessings of rest, a peace that will pass all understanding. Thank <laughs> you.